Oh, wow. Uh, it works. I'll create a step-by-step -step plan to write a Python program for the game of life. And it's already starting looking on the web, which is pretty cool. It found the correct website. So it's going to use the Conway's game of life. So this is pretty neat. Devika is an open source project that is trying to replicate Devon from Cognition Lab, which claimed to be the first AI software engineer. And this project is getting a lot of traction. And currently, it's a trending project on GitHub. In this video, I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to set this up on your local machine. Now, the key features of is that it supports a number of different projects. So it supports proprietary models like Cloud3, GPT-4, and also local LLMs using Olama. The code implements advanced AI planning and reasoning capabilities. It has contextual keyword extraction, and it can write code as well. So just like Devon, this is supposed to have planning and reasoning engine. It also has its own terminal where it can write code. And there is a browser integration as well, which Devika uses to uh, search for different things online. So the goal of this video is to walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to set this up on your local machine. And I'll show you how to use both local LLMs as well as proprietary LLMs with Devika. But before that, a very important disclaimer from the authors. This project is currently in a very early development or experimental stage. There are a lot of unimplemented and broken features at the moment, uh, and they are welcoming contributions. And even in my own experimentations, I have seen that there are quite a bit of issues, but it's a very promising project. Let's look at how to set this up. For Python uh, Package Manager, they recommend to use UV but I'm going to be using Conda because I have already set this up on my local machine. For JavaScript, we will need to install bun. And if you're using local LLMs with Devika, then you want to set up Olam as well. So first let's install bun. For this, just go to bun.sh and just copy this command. I'm running this on a MacBook Pro, but the same command should work for Windows and Linux as well. So first we will just copy that, run the command. This will download bun and install it on your local machine. Next, we will need to download Olama. So just go to olama.com and then depending on your uh, operating system, just select uh, the appropriate download. So in this case, I have already set this up on my machine, so I'm not gonna do this step. Once you have those things set up, let's uh, start the installation process. First, we'll clone the GitHub repo. But instead of cloning the main repo, I'm going to actually clone this PR because it integrates DuckDuckGo as a search engine. By default, it uses the uh, Bing search API. And I was having trouble with using Bing search API. So I will just use this PR rather than the actual main repo. But hopefully, this is going to be integrated soon to the main code. So I'll put a link to this specific PR in the video description. So here I'm using git clone and then providing the link to the repo. So this will clone the repo for us. Okay, so the repo is cloned. We're going to change directory. So for that, we'll type cd davika. And now if you type ls, this will uh, show you the contents of this new folder. Next, we're going to create a virtual environment. You can use any Python package manager. I like to use Conda. And the way we do it is we are going to use Conda create dash n, then the name of the virtual environment, and then the Python version that you want to use. I already have this set up, so I'm not going to create a new virtual environment. And in order to activate it, we're going to use Conda activate the Vika. And you can see that we are within our new virtual environment. Okay, so let's look at all um, the contents of the folder. Next, we need to install the requirements uh, for this project. So we're going to use pip install dash r requirements.txt. This will download all the required packages. As you can see, I have already downloaded these. You also need to install the browser access. So for that, we are going to be using this play, write, install, and it will install all the required dependencies. So here we are going to run this. I have already set this up. 
Now, one additional dependency that you need to install is Node. On macOS, I will be using Brave to install Node.js. For your operating system, you need to look at the corresponding commands. And we're going to also use Brave to install NPM. Okay, so once this is set up, we are all set. So next I went ahead and opened the folder or project in Visual Code Studio because I wanted to make some changes in here as well. So next we are going to CD into this UI folder. So for that we will type CD UI. And you can see there are a whole bunch of files in here. So we're going to use npm install. This will install some of the required packages in order to run the UI. And within the UI folder, you will need to also run the bun install command. Now, before starting the recap, uh, we need to set up some configuration. So go to this uh, config file. Here you can provide your Bing API key, Google search. Uh, if you want to use Claude, you need to provide your API key here. If you want to use OpenAI uh, models, you can provide your API keys in here. So in my case, I'm going to provide all the API keys. Uh, just replace this with your API key and save the file. By default, this is going to try to use either Bing or Google search if it's searching the, the web, but I want to use the DuckDuckGo. So for that, I'm going to go to source agents and within there, there's this agent.py file. So within the file, I'm going to go to line 67 We'll uncomment that and commit the Google search part and just save the file. Okay, and we're going to open another terminal. So this one is going to be used for running the API. Uh, the API backend server is implemented using Flask and the front end is, I think, in uh, Node. So we will need two different uh, terminals. So here we're going to go back to the main folder. And the second one is running uh, inside the UI folder. But we need another terminal which will run the Olama server. So I'm going to open another terminal. I'm going to type Olama and then serve. This will start an Olama server. Okay, now within the main Devika folder, we want to run this devika.py file. So for that, type python devika.py. This will start the Flask backend server. Here you can see the server is up and running. Currently it's in the debug mode, so it's not going to show any messages. But let's go back and change that. So we're going to go to the vika.py file. And here under debug, we are going to change this to true, save the file, kill the server, and then let me rerun this. So we're going to run the server again. And now uh, the debug mode is on, so we're going to see all the messages that are being exchanged. So this is good. Now uh, we're going to go to the other terminal, which is inside the UI folder. So if you type in pwd, this basically uh, gives you the path. You want to make sure that you are inside the UI folder. And now here we are going to uh, run the bun, then run, and then dev command. This will basically start our front end. So here is our front end. Uh, you need to access this uh, local host or URL. Okay, so when you go to that URL, you will see uh, the main interface. Here's the main interface of Tavika. It's very similar to the Devon's interface that they showed in the demo. So there is a browser tab that Tavika is going to be using to search internet. There's a terminal which is going to be used to run code. And this is the main interface that will be used to show the messages and you can communicate with the Vika. So first let's go to select project. Here you need to provide a project name. So let's call it test, right? So now you can see it's using the test project. Next, you need to select the model. So it has support for both proprietary as well as local models. So for this test, we're going to run the Mistral latest model. And here you can see that it changed to Mistral. Okay, just to see if everything works or not, we are going to start with a very simple prompt. Write a program in Python that prints numbers from 1 to 100. Let's send this message and let's see what happens. Okay, so Devika says, 
I create a Python program that prints numbers from one to 100 following these steps. So it came up with a step-by-step -step plan. And you can see that it already tried to access internet. So it opened a web browser and it's trying to access a website, which is pretty cool. So let's look at the steps, set up a new Python file. So this is going to use an IDE, then import the necessary libraries. And you can see it's actually checking different websites. So from one website, it moved to the other one. But this is pretty cool. So basically, here's the internal, I think, dialogue that the Vika is using. So it says, I'm browsing the web to search the following queries. So Python IDE setup, how to create a new project in PyCharm or Jupyter Notebook, right? So it's actually trying to figure out what tools it's going to need to create that program. And here's the internal monologue that the Vika is having. And it actually came up with the code. This is pretty neat. Now, if you go back and look at the back end, so here are all the messages that are being exchanged. Uh, and you can look at the progress of what the Vika is doing. So this is pretty cool as well. Now, in this case, the code it came up with is actually correct but I'm not sure how do we run this. Okay, I don't think it stores this anywhere. Okay, actually you have to go to the projects and it created a uh, folder called test. And within here, it actually wrote down that uh, code. There is a small indentation error, but other than that, it actually works. So this is pretty neat. Now it's uh, still stuck on writing code. So these are, I think, small bugs that are going to be fixed as this project evolves. But overall, I think it's a good start. All right, so I'm gonna create another project called Game of Life. And let's ask it to write a code for the Game of Life program. Again, we're going to use the Mistral model. So I'll just select the same model. Uh, this is an example prompt that the authors of the repo have used. So I'm gonna just reuse this without providing too much details. Let's see what it comes up with. Oh wow, uh, it works. So it says, I'll create a step-by-step -step plan to write a Python program for the game of life. And it's already starting looking on the web, which is pretty cool. So here is the step-by-step -step process and it found the correct website. So it's going to use the Conway's game of life with Python example online. So this is pretty neat. Now again, uh, it's thinking about doing it step-by-step. -step. So first of all, it it is trying to familiarize itself with game of life rules and concepts and it's doing online research for this. So this is pretty great. And I think it's uh, right now doing the online research stage. Then it will set up a Python project, will create necessary files to implement and install all the required packages. Then it plans to write the function to represent the initial state of the grid and display it. And it will also write functions to calculate the next generation based on the game of life rules, right? So the steps that it outline are actually correct and if it's if it can do all of them i think it will come up with a proper solution which is pretty amazing now i think this one is going to take a while if you want to use a proprietary model like cloud 3 or uh, gpt4 you can select them from here make sure that you provide the api key in the config file i'm going to come back to it when it's done processing i had to kill that process because it took forever now let's try the Haiku model from Claude. So here we selected uh, Claude3 Haiku. And let's call this uh, test2. Now we're going to use the same prompt, write a program that implements the game of life. And let's see what the results of Haiku are. So we sent in the prompt. It says, certainly I would be happy to create step-by-step -step plan. So it came up with a plan here which actually looks pretty neat. And it already started accessing a website. This seems to be much faster now. This is pretty cool. Uh, I think it has to do with the browser that it's supposed to use. So it already found the correct Python implementation example code on a website. So this is nice. Here it's supposed to keep track of token usage, but in my tests, it's not updating at all. This seems to take a while to complete any process. But even for Devon's demo that Cognition Labs shared on their website, it was taking a good 20 to 30 minutes to complete different tasks. Okay, so it's been a while and it's still actually processing it. 
but I'll have to stop this. Anyways, I feel like it's a very uh, good initial step given that Devon is not even uh, available at all. And there is an open source al alternative which you can use today. There are definitely a lot of issues with the code base, but it's under active development. And if you're interested, there are a whole bunch of open pull requests. And if you find a feature that you want to implement, make sure to contribute to the project. That is the beauty of open source. And this is not the only project. There is another project called Open Devon. They also just pushed some code to the repo. It was just a readme in the beginning of the week. I'm going to have a quick look at Open Devon as well and see how it compares uh, to the Vika and the original Devon. Anyways, I hope uh, you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.